Philo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Oh, we are live. Dang. Still, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see the warning screen. Just in case. This applies to this video. Twitch.com. That's where you can catch any of the live streams. The usernames at the bottom of the screen. We do got Patreon. We do got merch. Everything's in the description. Uh, this is Campaign We'll Take It Away. Season 4, Episode 20. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Oh, Chris BMX, appreciate the sub. Tier one. Salute. Mm -mm 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 -mm. A recent report from a leading landlords association shows that housing benefit tenants are being increasingly turned away from the private rental sector. These tenants are viewed as a bigger risk because of the widening gap between market rents and the housing benefit councils are prepared to pay. For the Last year, two-thirds of landlords with tenants claiming housing benefits experienced rent arrears. Oh, we, okay. Paul Bowhill and Ben Pinner are High Court enforcement agents. They travel all over the southeast of England, recovering debts and repossessing homes. Today, they're in North London to carry out an eviction. We're going wow. to we North do, Nine, sir? which is Edmonton Green. It's just slightly down market area, this, isn't it? Funny enough, this is where so Dad used to have a house. That's what I mean, down market right. area. <laughs> the tenants, a mother and daughter, owe over £6,000 in unpaid rent. We want Garrett Drive, flat to five. Notice of eviction has been sent by the county court. But the landlord escalated the case to the High Court, and the tenants must leave today. I'm guessing they might be the landlord and the locksmith. But this eviction Mario, isn't going to be straightforward. Okay. That's what I like to hear. Good morning. 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 Paul Bowhill. Hello, Harry. Hello, Harry. Do you know? We have keys yet. Yeah. You're not communicating with us at all, refusing to speak to us, haven't turned up to any of the court cases. So it's standard, really. It's useful to be able to throw that back when yes. they say, well, we don't know why we're moving. If you give us a few minutes, yes, we'd we like to get the bloodshed and the shouting under control. I'm not sure if the home, I haven't been inside, to be honest. But it's even uh, better, it's yeah. not. OK, I'll leave it to you. Good luck. Thank you very much, Thank son. You. Next one. Oh, there's a pram outside. Oh, dear. Which one was it? Five or Five. six? Smile when I knock on the door, I'm only thinking of the possibilities of what might occur, so I'm just going through the risk assessment. People are increasingly aggressive, but my attitude on the doorstep is perfectly calm, collected, and just running through the scenarios that might follow. Somebody in there, could you hear the door creaking? Can you open the door, please? We're from the court. We know you're in there. I'd like to think I'm talking to myself, but I get this distinct impression that there is someone there. Is his eyebrows done? He got them joints threaded. What's going on? With no one answering, Ben decides to use the keys he's been given by the landlord's agent. 
Did they change the locks? But there's a problem. It appears the locks have been changed. Do you want to open the door? Alright, let, let bro come on in. Hey, you can either open it or I'm going to break it down. Otherwise, I'll have to open it. Oh, okay. We will break in if you don't open the door. Talk to us. Let's get negative. Let's get the locksmith. As Paul heads downstairs, Ben tries again to get somebody to answer the door. Just so you know, you have one hour to leave the property, so you're currently 12 minutes into that. So if you want to keep wasting it, that's your decision. But this isn't going to change, and we're not going to go anywhere. Minutes later, the landlord's agent brings the locksmith upstairs. So we checked it about two weeks ago, and he's working, so I'm surprised he's not working today. Top one's not working. Yeah, no. Don't be surprised. They, you know, they didn't know he was coming. Changed it. The landlord's agent decides to call the tenant to see if he can get a response. I'm calling from Homelink, landlord's office, regarding your property. We're here with the enforcement officer. Are you home? Can you open the door? She's hung up. Well, we just go for it then. I'm obviously hung up on you. Yeah. Locksmith will have to earn his money. That's OK. But as the locksmith starts to force the lock, the agents are in for a surprise. Special metal. Dang! Boy, they went the full length to try to not get this in there. They got aluminium? <laughs> what, they got the same stuff? Uh, Captain America's? Shield was made out of? Wolverine's claws? What's going on? The new locks are high security and can't be forced with a standard drill. When they're not answering and they obviously have come to the mindset wow. that we'll just go away, that's really not the case. We're going to be. Alright, let's go get the uh, chainsaw. Coming through that door, whether you like it or not, one way or the other. Paul and Ben now have no option but to break down the door. Keep the door clear. Keep clear the hallway. Permission to carry on? Yeah. Hello? I'm not impressed, madam. That really wasn't necessary, was it? <laughs> hey, she's standing at the door. <laughs> oh, that's fun. This is great. Hello? Shorty at the door like, dang, they just, they in. I'm not impressed, madam. That really wasn't necessary, was it? We are High Court Enforcement. Okay, so One talk to us. This isn't going to solve anything. And you're running out of time rapidly, madam. We're amicable people. We're not here to cause problems. We understand you don't want us here. But at the end of the day, we have a job to do. And we're trying to help you to help yourself get to the council. Don't shut the door. What do you want? Get up the room. I don't want you in here. Mom! This is not going to make a scrap of difference. Madam, I must inform you that any obstruction of us in this execution of this writ will result in your arrest by police. Do you understand? I'm simply doing my job, madam. The agents might be inside. That's the daughter? Died. But can they get the tenants out before tempers escalate? Man, damn, it's getting real negative. I seen it. Bro, elbow got smashed in the door. Need a recap. But can they get the town? We're in. Oh, somebody open the door. Binge, but today, did you not talk to us? Mom! Now, the agents need to make the tenants understand that they must leave today. We've got 45 minutes to get your personal effects together and to leave the flat. The younger tenant won't speak to the agents, so Ben I know his elbow hurt. tries to reason with her mother. 
We are amical people. I don't care. What do you want? We are here from the court to evict you. Okay. You have 40 minutes to clear mm. your item. Okay. That's dirty or necessary. In only one case out of 100, is the tenant going to be packed and ready to go? The rest of the tenants will still have their head in the bucket of sand, waiting for the knock with the actual eviction notice. The younger tenant has a baby and is entitled to emergency accommodation from the council. Ben wants her to understand what she needs to do next. Obviously you were aware of the county court judgment and that you were as evicted, that you was asked to leave the premises. Because you failed to do so, we have been instructed to attend today. I don't expect you to clear this whole flat right here, right now. You need to pack a bag with the essentials, medications, identification, clothing, and anything to last you for the next few days. You then take the writs which I've given you to the council. They will, I hope, provide you with emergency accommodation. Okay? If you need me, I'll be... They, they will, I hope, provide you. And I guarantee, though, you hear me? Yeah, here, my name is Ben. When there are children involved, it is a lot worse because they're vulnerable. It is hard hitting at times. We just hope that they'll get the necessary help from the council. The agents have been in the property for over an hour. The tenants have finally begun to pack. But as Paul and Ben start an inventory of the flat, they're in for a shock. It's empty, isn't it? It's, it's like a hoarder's paradise. Open the door as well. This is crazy. How does it smell in there? This, since they broke in, I was a bit wondering. It's not hoarding though, is it? Everything's just overdone. The state of the place, it's absolutely cluttered to the roof. If the landlord were to clear it out, it would take a three-man team, best part of the day, to clear that out. Ben wants to know how the family have got into such a serious situation. You're not working at the moment. No, there's a lot going on, so. Yesterday, we just had our lights cut off, you know. Lights cut so, off by who? Like, the electricity? Yeah. Well, I take my half of the rent, and that's how much they say they can take the full. That's so it's, it, it is a shortfall in the benefits? Yeah, very shortfall. It appears that when the family moved in two years ago, the tenant's housing benefit covered any shortfall in the rent. But after her benefits were capped six months ago, she fell into arrears. That's why you've struggled to pay the rent. I acknowledge that. The fact that because there's a benefits cap, this might be an ongoing situation. One thing that's not occurred in this case, which is a common denominator in most of these cases, is that they won't communicate with the agent or the landlord. Now, the agent and the landlord have tried repeatedly to phone them, but they've just been cut off. So if they'd communicated, things could have been done. Nearly an hour and a half after the agents arrived at the property, the tenants are ready to leave. Do you want me to give you a hand? Okay. Well, that's a big fella. You grabbed it all. Thank you. Just put it on the floor. Sure. We gotta go. The family are now homeless. If we would have known, we would have at least like prepared for we it. We feel but bad. Not prepared for it, but like we would have known. Know. Like you guys have to do a job, just like I would have to do a job. What you do need to do is speak to social services because you have a child that are obliged to rehouse you. Mm -hmm. It will be up to the council to give them a bed for the night. But all in all, it went fairly smoothly. A uh, little bit of argy barges. Talking about fairly smoothly. First of all, they had an impenetrable lock on the door. You had to short, shoulder the wood that one. Uh, it was the only way to get in. But the door barge could have been avoided if they uh, just communicated. Well, they went from not talking to us at all to having a full-on conversation. So, you know, we get there in the end. Low key, she did sound American. I didn't even clock it and realize it until you just said it. Then in my head, I played it back. I'm talking to somebody in the chat, y'all. Yeah, she's definitely sounded American. Over 40,000 county court judgments were issued against businesses in England and Wales during the first six months of 2016. 
their average value now exceeds £3,500, and it's small businesses who have been hardest hit. The total value of county court judgments against businesses in the first half of 2016 was £149 million. Pounds. W. Reader. High Court Enforcement Agents Del Anglin and Brian O'Shaughnessy are in... Okay, got the gang back together. That means me and something real negative about to happen. North London. With a writ to... In North London, okay. ...recover nearly £7,000 owed by a garage to a dissatisfied customer. The next job there is from Stoke Newington. Um, uh, after the sum of £6,698.79. I think there are garages, MOTs and repairs and stuff. When the garage failed to pay, the claimant escalated the case to the High Court. If the garage can't or won't pay today, the agents have the right to seize goods to offset the debt. Oh, man. Street coming out. <clears throat> How you doing? Oh my thing! <laughs> Good guy. Thank you, guy. <laughs> Why are you on that, bro? Trying to get through here. Is it all dead end down there, is dead it? Dead end, bro. Okay, cool. What side do you want? What number? Thank you for. How many people working there? Is it, is it different people? Yeah, because we've had like letters coming through for other people and they're not here. What what other people? Like, Sometimes you just gotta hit up, get up out the whip. Just let people know you're not fearing nothing. And I believed that you would do it. I knew it was gonna be a certain level of negativity. The writ is in the name of a company, so the agents need to find out who's in charge. Are you the boss, man? No. Is he here? No. Who's the governor? Who's the boss? Died of cancer a very long time ago. So You've been trading under the name then? New. That's illegal. New companies. Yeah, but China. you've been using yeah. their name though, haven't it? Maybe still on some of the letterheads or whatever, but it's, oh. it's changed now. The man who says his name is Gary claimed that a new company have taken over. And his uncle now runs the claim. This doesn't look like no goddamn dare, Gary. You are not a Gary, brother. Come on now. Claimed that a new company have taken over. And his uncle now runs the business. But the agents need proof. So I need to see some paperwork to that effect. Can, can you get some paperwork organised? Can I get paperwork? Yeah. If you have a company that is not trading, you then issue an invoice from that company. As far as I'm concerned, you owe the money. They need to show that that debt does not belong to that company. Gary gets his uncle on the phone. Hello? Yeah, you've got these, uh, you know, in county court judges, guys? Yeah, they're here. They want to enforce the writ. Yeah, the other guy's got inside the um, garage. That ain't what's his name, sister, is it? Is that her, yeah? It seems that Gary has an idea what the debt is about. She brought her car in, it was um, broken down, and it was leaking oil all over the road, this, that, the other. She gave one price of the engine, the turbo, and it's because she couldn't afford it, she's working, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't understand how it's gone this far and the car's still right there. Which one is it? car's right there on the ramp, bruv. It appears the claimant's vehicle is still somewhere on the premises. Dell puts the pressure on. Where? We're here to collect money, bruv. You're here to collect money, but our car's still there. Would you want to keep the car and give me seven grand? Keep the car and give me seven grand? You're crazy, bruv. That's what I'd ask you. Hey. <laughs> I'm not there to be involved in the dispute. I'm there on the command of the High Court writ of control. Yeah, Whether question. that's fair or not fair is for somebody else to make that decision. We've come there to remove goods or to collect money. With payments looking unlikely, the agent's only option could be to seize the car and return it to the claimant. But there's a problem. Where's the pistons? Where's the pistons? Well, they're certainly not in the car. <laughs> oh, the car's engine has been completely removed. It's now clear to the agents why the amount on the writ 
is so high. But well, what she's done is she's gone for the full value of the vehicle also, that's why so much. She wants the yeah. full value of the vehicle. <laughs> It'd been better for her to buy a new car than try to fix that. And my uncle has dealt with other customers and whatnot. I'm gonna keep it real with you. She got over on y'all. If this is the case, whatever y'all saying. She took it there, couldn't afford it, did something, 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 got, got y'all for 7,000, didn't she? They're not happy with certain things. Even though if a customer asks for a certain job and you give it to them, they're not happy with it. What can you do? Is that how it goes? That's how it goes, bro. Gary no claims reason. that the car came in on a recovery vehicle. The engine was removed to find out what was wrong, and the claimant was told it was beyond repair. But the claimant maintains that the garage took the engine out unnecessarily and wrote off her car. The, the pistons all burnt off. Pistons are over there. Now you're going to lie. Why do you so, let, why, <laughs> I don't know why she put it through a county court judgment and her car's still there. Why didn't you let her take the car then? She hasn't even come back since the last time she came. So the engine's got to go back in it, though. The engine's there, bruv. Yeah, it's, it's got to go, go back in. It's got to go back in. It's got to go back in, but it doesn't make sense putting it back in because you talk to any mechanic and say, boy, well, you must yeah, leave yeah, the yeah. engine out and tow it away well, with no engine. Yeah, yeah, well. Gary claims the damaged engine wasn't put back in, as the car needed an entirely new one. The engine's still here. Look, that's all that engine broken down in pieces. So parts of the engine is underneath here. The pistons is in there somewhere. When she brought the car, though, it had an engine in it, innit? The engine's still there, bro. I'm not gonna lie, this is a sketchy mechanic. One of them backyard red door mechanic shops. This is, this is, a. Hey. Told her this, yeah. but then she'd have to take it to another garage to get the car done. Oh, I don't want to get a truck again and take it to somewhere and you yeah, understand? That was the whole argument. <laughs> Yo, I don't know. She was full value of the car. Huh. Funny. She's funny. She's funny. And I know he working um, hard. She's funny. Look at this man knuckles. We can damage her car. car with that is that is a hard working knuckle. So I don't know how she was full value of a car that's damaged already. Yeah, there's nothing in there, there's nothing in there. No, but she wants her car, he's not saying he can't, she can't have the car. It's not as if he's been using the car for his own enjoyment. There's a clear dispute regarding works being carried out in the vehicle. Her vehicle's there, she wants to collect it, she probably doesn't want it, and she wants the value of the car back. She's got a £7,000 rich, she wants paying, there's nothing to take there or to take control of, there's no assets there. Um, so we can't pretty much do anything else but try and resolve it over the phone or advise the claim appropriately. With no assets to seize and no offer of payment, Brian and Dell have no choice but to walk away empty-handed. The vehicle's here. I don't even feel like they put that much effort. They was like, man, I ain't for it. <laughs> the engine's in pieces. What, what can you say? I mean, it's, it's, uh, I've never had something like this. We are given no information about what the debt's about when we go there. There's no real way, if he has no assets, to make this debtor pay and that's always frustrating the agents have one last word for gary you're a big man so what you're going to have to do the high court writ is live you're going to have to get it sorted out right. otherwise yeah you've got no business have you it's not up to me it's up to uncle and my cousin and whatnot because obviously they're running what business they're running from here you know i'm just talking this way yeah she's having a laugh Dell and Brian may be leaving empty-handed this time. But in Paul and Steve's next case... Ah, no, you're trying to give us... A grandma. Can you... There we go. And then famine. Helpless. Is that a commercial? More than three million people across the UK are living in rented properties without the landlord's permission. Mm. Three quarters of these have been in the property for more than six months. Recent research shows that only one in five requests by tenants to sublet are permitted by their landlord. Nearly half of tenants who sublet their property do, property do so without their landlord. Okay. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in West London to carry out another eviction. It's um, a writ of possession. The Hungarian tenant has rented the property for three years, but stopped paying rent six months ago. He's now £9,000 in arrears. 
What's the name of the road in case I pass it? Empire Road. And it's this one. Notice of eviction was sent by the county court, but the tenant ignored it. Now the case has been escalated to the High Court, and he must leave today. What number are we looking for? Five and six, fifty-six. OK, we're here. Let's go. Oh. The landlord's son, Mr Harani, and his uncle are waiting outside. Morning. You're here for us, are you? Yes, Mr. Hirani. That's the key I've got from the agent. Okay. Uh, the one with the yellow tag. All right. Okay. If you, just... you guys shouldn't be here. You're going to ignite a fire. Sit in the car for a few yeah, minutes, we'll just till we get the first 10, 15 minutes out of the way. Thanks very much. Let's see if he's open first. That's one key, which gets us in that one. You can now do your fancy knock on that door. Okay. There you go. Something. Hello, Hello, sir. My name is Paul Bowhill. I'm a High Court hey, Enforcement hey, Agent. Sorry? We have a repossession order for this property. Sorry. Uh, is that your system. name there? No, 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 no. no oh, no, is that no, person no. here? No, it's not, not here. Despite the man's claim that he isn't the tenant named on the High Court writ, Paul and Steve are instructed to evict anyone living in the house. It doesn't even matter. You have one hour to get personal effects together and then arrange with the landlord to come back and clear the rest out. We have to change the locks now. All right, OK, just not to the end of tomorrow because then one... No, no, it's got to be now, within the hour, by nine o'clock. Nine o'clock? Mm. Oh, you pick your man your eyes. Hey, in there trying to reason. He's talking about, ah, not today. We can't do it today. Tomorrow, maybe. I do. I do. I do. It seems there's more than just the one tenant named on the writ living in the house. <laughs> Ma'am, that's what you think. Hey, deep. The house should have been vacated three weeks ago. Three weeks? Ago. Yeah, okay. But you're still here today. Are you joking yeah. with us? We're going to be yeah. outside. Two days we need. I'm not joking with you. Today. My grandmother is very, very sick. I'm sorry, I have no choice. We My hands are tied. It is really unfortunate. We get a whole list of excuses from tenants as to why they can't or shouldn't be evicted. A lot of excuses revolves around their health status, which I'm sure is genuine, so I'm not belittling that situation. Despite the grandmother's illness, the agents are duty-bound to enforce the writ and evict the whole family today. Steve needs them to understand that they must seek help from the council. This is the situation. You have till nine o'clock to get personal effects, your passport, any medication, clothes for a few days. So what you would need to do, you understand me, sir? Thank you. Can you explain it to everybody else? Time. You need to be doing something. The sooner you get... Can you explain to her, there's no good her shouting at me, I don't understand her. Tomorrow, no. Today. One hour. Uh, stubborn. Stubborn. You're not in control of this, ma'am. I understand you're sick. Pack medicine, pack Robitussin, pack Tylenol PM, Excedrin, uh, Theraflu, get, get right. A couple jars of tea and, you know, hit the road. With the family not cooperating, Steve reminds them why the eviction is happening. One question, who's paying the rent? 
No, nobody is paying the rent for six months. Nine thousand pounds, not paid. You know, it's not me. It seems that the tenant named on the writ has unlawfully sublet the house. They could well be paying the, the tenant. That's quite easily, case, yeah. Just a Still irrelevant. We find on properties that we go to that the person who originally rented the property has sublet to other people. They're paying them, but he is not paying the landlord. So far, we've seen four. There's probably six people here. There's probably more. There's one downstairs room here, one out the back, probably three bedrooms, and it's fully occupied. The rent on this property is fifteen hundred a month, but the landlord fifteen hundred. This is kind of big for fifteen hundred. Has received no rent for six months. You know, this is this Hungarian landlord. Everybody in this, this is Hungarian people in the same problem. No good. No good man. Another member of the family arrives back home. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. What? Yeah. Why? Yeah, my mom is here. So. Good morning. Okay. Yeah. Move, man. You move. Yeah, oh. Yeah. No, because it's landlord, okay. it's not, okay. not coming a landlord. No, one that landlord. Cheap, cheap landlord is, you know, lie, lie, yes. lie. But your landlord isn't the man that owns the house. The man that you're paying obviously isn't paying the owner, whatever. It's tough getting finessed, man. Especially if that's not your living environment. Oh man, that's the worst type of person that they could do that to somebody. Money you've paid, he has taken. Shout out Guy Rant for following. The woman has a letter from the court about the eviction. Mm -mm, save the letter. NBY Skies, salute for following. Save that letter, ma'am. Because it's not, because no, no, man. But you shouldn't be here. They've already lost lots of money. They don't want to lose any more. So they go to the high court and then they issue a writ for us to come. Yeah, on your Nine people are here. The family finally seemed to have accepted the reality of the situation. They knew that to go. It does upset you. Unfortunately, it's a job and we have to step back from that. I don't think there's an easy way to get to get through it. You just have to try and be as sympathetic towards them as, as you can and make things as easy as possible for them. It's been an hour and a half since the agents arrived, and the eviction is complete. It was real deep in here. After months of trying to get the family out, the owners finally have their house back. We didn't expect um, so many people living in one house. The last um, six months, it's been very stressful. We try to evict these people out, and obviously they've played the game all the way. It's just the same story. People paying the wrong people. Bottom line is this, the landlord is 11,000 pounds-ish out of pocket. And I don't think that's fair. I agree with you. Two people got finessed. That middleman was putting in work, unfortunately. It will be up to the council to try and find them emergency accommodation for the night. But I hope there's some people that's young cheap kids so they can get that recent government figures reveal that homelessness has grown in the UK by more than a third in the last five years and has nearly doubled in London the figures are rising twice as fast among ethnic minority communities with 20,000 families evicted last year the number of homeless oh, hold on now the number of homeless and black, the number of homeless, black, and Asian 
minority households has risen by over 20% in the past three years. This looks like a project right here. Or a housing estate. High Court Enforcement Agents Dell Anglin and Brian O'Shaughnessy are in North London with a writ to recover nearly £12,000 in unpaid rent. Hello, Brian. What, what do we have? And we're here for the sum of £11,992.19. It's a load of money. Yeah. The debtor signed as guarantor on a tenancy agreement for her sister. Mm. But her sister didn't pay her rent for a whole year. Damn. And now the landlord has pursued the debtor through the courts for the money. Ouch. Must be these facts, here. Mm hmm. Fuck okay. If the debtor can't or won't pay, then the. We'll take it away. The agents can take away personal possessions to offset the debt. First moment. They look like they're gonna have 11 grand here. Can he even fit through that though? Hello. I'm here with the High Court rear. My name's Brian. What's this about? I can't discuss it with you. I'm sure you can on that side. It's not in your name. You not really, it's formalities. Just Maybe your mum can enlighten us. Will I get a telephone number? Give her a call? Yes, no problem, thank you. Hello. Thank you. What does mum do? Does she work? Yeah. Where does she work? Social She's social worker, yeah? yeah? Okay. Sorry, the mobile you're calling isn't available at the moment. While Brian tries to contact the defendant again, Dell enters the flat to talk to her son. It, hold on, wait. Can we just skip the politics? Can we just skip the formalities? That is not the same word. <laughs> that was not the same. I see you tried it, but I mean, but it almost got past me. My eyes aren't brilliant in the slide. Have you got a light? Something to show you. It's always important for an enforcement agent to get inside a property. Then you can see with your own eyes how they're living, that was real what slick. they've got, what they haven't got, so you can deduce how much they can pay. That was real slick, Who else lives in the house? Sisters. Are they older than you? No, just my brother's older. Do you know anything about it? No, he's less active than me. He's less active than you? Yeah, yeah. You say mum's a care worker? Yeah, it's not like that. It helps all people and shit. It would help if we can speak to mum. I'm back an hour or two. What time does she normally finish then? She normally here at two. We're going to take a look about at the moment. With the debtor at work. Oh, yeah, it's over. You're done. Ain't nothing in there. The agents look around the flat for any assets they could seize. But it becomes immediately nothing. clear that the family own nothing of any value. Everybody on public transport here, no one's got a car on us. On bus, yeah? Imagine some debt collectors coming to your house and be like, dang, we can't even get nothing. Ain't nothing good here. That's tough. It's tough. I'll, I know I'm poor. You don't got to remind me, sir. Okay. Is it old? Five years? There is nothing that's going to remotely cover anywhere near what we're looking to collect today. It really is a case of leaving a letter and coming to some sort of future payment arrangement according to our financial circumstances. It's, it's, There's it's, nothing there to remove. It's pretty done. Oh, here she go. But then the defendant arrives home early. Hello. Hello. I'm here. We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Um, the reason for our visit today, your sister was renting, okay? And there was 12 months rent outstanding. The debtor's sister, the tenant who built up the 12,000 pounds. Dang, she here too? Let's get negative. In rent arrears, also arrives. Is this, is this her? This is her, hello. Okay. Uh, my sister, she said, you know, uh, they need a reference. So yeah. that's why I give my name. I'm uh, not saying I'm begging for her rent. Well, I think... When I say, I'm, a, you know, I have reference, I leave this address, she's my sister. Well, you signed paperwork as a guarantor, not reference. I don't How know I didn't write anything. If you didn't sign as a guarantor, the land... See how quick they the sister got up out of there? The Lord would not have given her the property. Do you know what a guarantor ah, is? Here she go. It means yeah. that your sister should have made payments on her rent. You've guaranteed that you would pay the money 
in the event that she can't. So, so between you, then, yeah. you need to find eleven thousand pounds. Goodness, eleven thousand nine hundred ninety-two. That's a lot of money. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The debtor's sister is a refugee from Somalia. Oh yeah, it's over with. After a family tragedy, she fled to England with her three young children. She was evicted when she fell behind with her rent. The what? What the land? What the guys? What the landlord's chosen to do? He's chased you here because you were the guarantor. The debtor's son explains the situation to his mother. <laughs> But where do we can bring that money? So we can, we can't pay that money, so what so we can do then? At the end of the day, I have to look at their ability. You gotta go ahead and continue that little paperwork for DCBL. Let the claimant know that it ain't happening today. <laughs> to pay and what they can afford to pay that's sustainable over a period of time without it causing she finna offer five dollars a month and too much of an impact on their family it's clear to the agents that the family has a limited income but they must try to recover as much of the debt as possible if your mum's got savings mm. or something she might be able to put some of those savings to reducing this debt and we can arrange an arrangement i don't expect you to have twelve thousand pounds i don't expect you to have it yeah, but well, you need to pay a significant amount towards it. Can you find three thousand pounds today? Wow, I have got three thousand. Well, we, the bill is just under Get twelve. The bill, take it what you want. It. Okay. Because I didn't have what three thousand. It seems that the family can't even raise the reduced. Nah, man, sister's refugee. She signed some paperwork. She didn't even fully understand. Y'all walking in there, it's second hand. <gasps> Everything, everywhere, it's just, just y'all got to continue with y'all little papers. Y'all got to go ahead and get up out of there, man. Y'all ain't getting that. The amount that the agents have asked for, but as they're duty-bound to get the case resolved, will the debtor be able to save her family's few possessions? No. Y'all don't want that anyway, we already know. Not about this story. We're in not between money. The debtor acted as a guarantee. The debtor. Can you find three thousand? Okay. Now, with the risk of losing everything, the debtor's son tries to reason with his mother. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, so no, no. Some of these, man, you realize that people don't even see hope they can't even see hope they have no hope in their whole future and say down the line we will never have this money we'll, we'll never be able to pay this it'll take years that means you plan on living like this the rest of the way huh? that's why i said that that's why i said 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 that's why i it's clear the family can't raise yes, 3,000 pounds. So now the agents need to assess whether they'll be able to recover any of the 12,000 pounds at all. No. If we're going to try and help resolve the issue, let's start with what comes into the house. How much are we talking about? I'm Kara. How can I get that money? I, I work part time and my sister is income supporting. Where do we get that money? So your sister's an income support? Income support, yes. Yeah. Living here. Really. She lives with, she's homeless even. Where do we bring that money? When a debtor's telling me the That'd truth, you know, having to give them the right degree of empathy and listen to them, I can feed back to the claimant and say, this is their situation. They haven't got a pot to in. However, they can pay something as opposed to nothing. 
the agents have been in the flat for nearly 40 minutes. With emotions running high, they decide to offer the family a lifeline. I don't want you guys to starve. Do you understand me? I mean, I'm happy to set a monthly arrangement. Thousand pounds a month. Can you, can, you can do a grand a month. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. We're going to set an arrangement, yeah? They are not going to keep up with this again. But the debtor disagrees with her son that the family can afford the repayments. We can't to pay. Count to what I get now and count to what my sister That's gets because my sister is his income supporting. We pay 500 pounds. Better than 1,000 because he's there for 1,000. It's heavy. Let your son step up to the plate, man. It ain't gonna hurt. All you gonna do is default on payment, and then they just gonna be back. If he don't keep up his, you know. The family are in crisis. Bro, from hit the trap, <laughs> hit the hit the street running. Brian decides to intervene. What I don't want to do is you to be upset any further. 500 pounds a month, I'm happy. And we want to set something that's sustainable for you and you said you can do that. It's not reasonable. Brian calls the office to see whether the claimant will accept the family's offer. Of Brian calls the office to see whether the claimant... That's Snapchat I just seen? ...claimant will accept... Brian got Snapchat. ...the family's offer of 500 pounds a month. Hello. They've worked out all the finances, the incomes and outgoings, 500 is fine. Tell yeah, can you find a client and tell him 500 a month starting 30 days from today? All right, bye. That doesn't seem stupid. So yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the safe way to go, man. Yeah, no job. That's why you wanted to pay the lower amount, right? But you've got your, the whole family here. You, you can get together and resolve this, yeah? Your son's here, okay. and even though he's not working, he still wants to help. So yeah, get a job soon, you don't worry. We're managing it now. Mm, definitely. You don't have to walk looking behind your back now, you know? So. You'll never walk alone. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Hello? The office calls back with a response from the claimant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lovely one. Okay, we got uh, the 500 for you. <laughs> now, if you win the lottery in the meantime, yeah. please remember that. <laughs> 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 Not before settling with me, I hope yeah. you are. <laughs> no, you absolutely before settling. I'm out of here. Mum, what I've done here, okay, what's called a control goods agreement. Basically, what this is, is an agreement between you and I that we don't take any of your stuff and you pay 500 quid a month. That's basically it, okay? What it does say, what it does allow us to do is if you don't stick to that agreement, we can come back and regain it and change your premises with him. But I don't think I have that problem with you guys. You're gonna pay it, you're gonna keep in contact with me, okay? Thank you, you very here. much. Thank you, brother. It'll work out, yeah? Thank you. Mum. Thank you, thank you. Good luck, okay. yeah? Okay. See Any later, problems, yeah. give us a call. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mum, bye-bye. Thank you. But the debt is just the latest in a long line of family hardships. 500 is hard for me and hard for my sister, but we can do it. We can. I believe in you. 500. We know. Five, we I believe. Do it what can. We life is hard, you know. My sister, she get married. They killing, you know, people. So Somalia now they kill it. So oh. when they kill it, she have pregnant and she have two children. Oh, but God still, she's Lee. my small sister. God, look. I didn't know the family origin story was that, now. It's, it's difficult to life. Sorry to hear that. She's not even really. I think she's a good person. She's trying to support her family and they're struggling.
unable to pay 500 the first month and was reduced to 250. Okay. W's all around the board, man. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn your post, I'm gone.